Hey, what's happening, War Gamers? Welcome to another battle report. I'm joined today by Alan. There we go. Yeah, and the camera's a little rough, and we are in a big open space, so lots of echoing, and other guys are playing games as well, so uh, so there might be some background noise. Uh, anyway, we are going to be playing a 25 power level game today. Uh, this is because our local game store is uh, basically starting to get into a bit of a campaign crusade uh, kick at the moment, and that is what the early games are starting at. So uh, Alex wanted to sort of try it out, get a feel, get a feel for his army and everything like that. So I was definitely willing to to acquiesce, and uh, yeah. So he's going to be bringing his Imperial Guard here. He's got some uh, Lambda Lions uh, for his uh, uh, Astro Militarum, his uh, Tempesters. That's it. Uh, and then he's got his own uh, custom uh, traits for the other ones. And I'm going to be rocking my Grey Knights in the first time in quite a while. So really looking forward to this. Got a nice little surprise for you down there as well. Uh, if you're viewing this on, uh, on, you know, you'll know the day if you're viewing it. Uh, so really looking forward to that. So it's 25 power level. We are doing a sweep and clear mission. Uh, we've already got the board set up and everything like that. So let's go take a look at it. Now be sure to always hit that like, subscribe, and please leave me comments below. Let us know what we did right, what we did wrong. That is how we can always improve the way we play, uh, especially after the pandemic where we are all very rusty. So anyway, let's go take a look at the board and the armies. So we have Alex's army here. So this is, uh, we're actually both playing, I think, one power level shy on this one. So we're actually doing 24 power level here because the numbers just didn't work out. So Alex, why don't you just quickly tell us left from right, what do you got here? Uh, we got a bunch of scions here. We got a Tempester squad. We got mm -hmm. a command squad as well. The regular squad has just the hotshot Laz and a heavy hotshot Laz, while well, the command squad has a pair of Meltas and a pair of Plasma. Hopefully it'll plow right through any armor that you're bringing along. <laughs> Green Knights are never happy with that stuff there. Uh, so. We have a Tempestor Prime as well. He's going to be leading them. He has the command rod, which means two orders, but no gun. That's fine. Okay. Uh, behind them we have our Bulgren, which are for our regular Astro Militarum infantry. They are going to be running as, uh, they're, they're just big and beefy there, right? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. They're going to be running hopefully some really good stuff, hopefully get some slamming in. Oh, yeah. Then we got the uh, Warlord up front right here. Mm -hmm. uh, he is... Hopefully going to be carving through a lot of stuff. I'm bringing him with the Blade of Conquest. Okay. And the Master Tactician. Hopefully farm some of that CP as well. Yep, gotta have and that. And then with the Bulgren, we have Bulgren and the uh, Commander. We have uh, two infantry squads. Ooh, nice. The light came back <laughs> The light on. just went back on, yeah. We have two infantry squads. One has just a plasma. One has a grenade launcher and a missile. Going to put those guys out back. Hopefully they can hold that point. Yep. And for some happy, happy Bernie action, we have our command squad, four flamers, three regulars, and a heavy. And we're going to see if we can toast some Grey Knights today. Wonderful. Okay. It's always nice to see an infantry heavy uh, Astro Militarum list. So looking forward to seeing how I go up against this. And going up against that uh, Astro Militarum list is my really, really tiny Grey Knight list here. Uh, but as you can see, he is being, uh, it's being led up by Castellan Garen Crow. He's going to be taking his uh, Terminators and Purifiers against the, uh, the, the Astro Militarum on this one. Do some cleansing light of the Emperor. So his Dominus power for this particular one is going to be a, uh, a Gate of Infinity, because he, he needs to get around and I don't have a lot of models to really move around with. So he's got that kicking around. The entire uh, the entire thing is going to be the uh, Rapier Brotherhood, but of course that means only the Terminators are going to get an access to that uh, special ability because everyone else is just Honor Chapter members. Uh, so we do have five Purifiers with Halberds, even that guy with the sword, that, that's a Halberd, don't, uh, don't play around with that. Uh, and they got their Purifying Flame Psychic ability there in addition to Smite. And then we have our Terminators over here. So once again, there is a little bit of proxy in here. This, this Metal Duder uh, right there actually does have a Psy Cannon because I was expecting some more armor. Uh, I'm kind of wishing I took Silencer now, but it is what it is. And they are going to be a rocking Hammer Hand and Smite. So that is my army. Very tiny, only 11 models compared to his, I think, like 30-some models. So we'll see what's going to happen here. 
So we got our table set up here. So we do got the sweep and clear kicking around. So Alex has chosen his objective to be put right there, guarded by some missile launchers and a guard squad. We have another objective put right in the middle of no man's land along with this. We do have the nice big obscuring tree in the middle there. I have my objective sitting down there being held by the Terminators at the moment. And then Castellan Crow is in the building just because I don't want to get a missile launcher to the face on turn one. Uh, and then right over here, we do got a whole bunch of uh, Bulgrins and uh, Flamer Command Squad ready to wreak some havoc. Both of us do have some reserves. I got my unit of purifiers held back and he has his Lambda Lions being held back here. So we are ready to go. We just need to determine who is going to be going first here. So go grab a D6, Alex, and we are going to, uh, to find out which of us is going first. So I got myself a two, you got yourself a five. Are you taking first turn? Uh, yes, please. Yes, sir. Okay, so we're gonna go into turn one for the Astro Militarum. We are gonna take our beat and burn squad, our bullies and our flamers, and mm -hmm. we're gonna move them up, hopefully to capture this point right here. I mean, Maybe threaten Crow a little. I mean, with these guys, they, they got no shooting, so you could actually advance them easily enough if you want, although that does put you at a little bit striking distance for me, so. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna see if I can draw you up instead of coming after you right away. All right, well, let's uh, let's figure out. So where are, you, where are you moving them? So I'm gonna move these guys. These bulgur have six. So now if you're going to advance him, you also got to make that roll now. I'll have to read that up to you. No, for now. Okay, so just moving forward six inches. Just moving them. Beautiful. So we check the distances and his base is actually just enough to get into that objective right there. So perfect. Beautiful. So everyone else just going to follow up behind them. Sounds great. And that is the command squad there. So that is a high priority target for me. Love it. Yeah. All right, Alex is just gonna sit on this objective over there and hold on to it. And I just realized something else. I don't think either of us actually chose our secondaries yet. No, I don't no. think we have. That'd no. probably be a good idea. Yeah, so. let's, let's get those secondaries quickly chosen. All right, with just a quick aside, we got our stuff determined. Um, so I will be taking assassination. I'll be taking, uh, oh, gee, also my brain is failing on me. I'm gonna be taking the, uh, the, the Grey Knight specific one. I believe it was Warcraft. And uh, I'll be taking the, oh, that's right, behind enemy lines. That, those are the three that I'm gonna be going with. Uh, Alex, you were gonna be taking Abhor the Witch, right? Yes, yeah. uh, I finally have a game where I'm not using a Psyker, so I'm gonna be taking the Psykers down instead. <laughs> there you go, so that's um, a possible seven points he can grab off me. We're gonna raise some banners and try and see what happens there. Okay. And we have some drop troops, so let's try and engage on all fronts. Beautiful, I think those are all very attainable for you. Perfect. The other squads have moved. Uh, this squad right here, Alex, what's he doing? Is he raising the banners? They are gonna raise the banners. They're gonna hold right there. Beautiful, and then these guys are just gonna hang out and kind of fire off some missiles whenever they can? Yeah, I was gonna see how far those missiles go and see if I can maybe get a nice one blown right into your boys right over here. Oh, so I guess we're shooting into the, uh, the shooting phase here. So the missiles oh. themselves, I believe, are what, 32 inches? 36 inches? They are 30. Six, I believe. Yeah, I'll so you, check. Yeah, so you, uh, if they're 24, something is weird there, but yeah, but you should be able to fire them off, no problem. Because we're using an old codex. Yeah, that's right, no new guard book just yet. Which but, means uh, orders I, come at the beginning of the shooting phase. Perfect. One last quick note, uh, I, I do not have the ability to change my tides in this particular match, so I'm gonna go with the Tide of Celerity, uh, just because I gotta make sure I get across the board faster and hopefully get into some charges. Uh, we'll see if it actually works out uh, for me in this particular game. So, for our orders, we are going to be using him to put move, move, move on these Bulgren. So they're going to run forward and also advance. Okay, so does that allow them to charge afterwards as well, or is it just, just the move? Uh, they cannot charge, but I'm hoping that I can put a bull, if I can get a good chunk of flesh in front of you, maybe Crow will get distracted and keep out away from the other guys. Well, it's always possible. All right, so roll, uh, so the move with an advance, go for it. Uh, so they advance 2d6? No, no, sir. Yeah, yes. so it's just 1d6 for the advance. So Which is... So we got a five with their advance, so they're moving a total of 11 inches. We should put them like right around there or so, I think. Yes. All right, so there we go. I got the marker right there. Perfect. Ah, it also means you're not sitting on the objective. Beautiful. Oh, geez, that just means your game plan is just beat my face, isn't it? 
<laughs> okay, that, that's great. So the Ogrens moved up there. So that is the only order being issued at the moment. So uh, we are going to move into the shooting phase. Not a lot is really going to be shooting at this stage because unfortunately these guys do not have line of sight anywhere. Uh, these guys do see a Terminator, so they can they can start shooting. But uh, I think their LAS guns are going to be out of range because uh, it is more than 24 inches. But that Way missile launcher. Uh, and yeah, I think really there's only a missile coming at me this turn. So I might be getting a little lucky here. Missile launcher going to be going in against this squad of Terminators. Uh, I I'm just going to sit behind cover. I mean, I, I got I got the light cover there, so I'm looking at a one-up armor save against your crack missile, which I think is what like minus two, minus three, or something like that. Minus one, right? Minus now. one. I get my two-up armor save. Amazing. Okay, so go ahead and just uh, throw your roll right down there. That is, you hit on a four plus, I believe. Yep. Yep, you hit on a four plus, okay. So now mm -hmm. go ahead and roll your wound. So you're looking for a, uh, your tough, uh, it's strength what, eight? This is strength, let's uh, oop. So you're gonna be looking for a two plus to wound here against my, my paltry toughness of four. So go ahead. That is definitely gonna wound. Hey. Yeah, and it's a minus two, so I'm looking at a three up armor save here. I can't lose a guy this early on. I got a command point. Reroll that. Uh, yeah, there we go. So we'll save. Yeah, I, I can't lose a Terminator this early. That, that's crazy uh, for me. Come on. <laughs> so, uh, so that is the shooting phase. Uh, because they move, move, move. There's not going to be any charges happening from those uh, bullgrins there. So uh, we're going to take a look at the end of the phase. I don't think anything scored just yet. Uh, you have Freeze engage. Banners. Yeah, oh, and that's the last thing we forgot to mention. Like, those raised, guys are just raising there. That doesn't get the first one. So, um, but that you're is engaged. You're yeah. engaged, so you're going to get two points for engage on all fronts at the moment. So, at the end of the first turn, the Astro Militarum have their two points, and we're going to go into the Grey Knights here. And my turn is going to be nice and easy. Uh, I know exactly what I'm going to do here. Uh, I'm going to rely on hopefully getting some, uh, some Gave Infinity off late game to try and get more objectives. So these Terminators are basically going to just come out here to play, I think. And uh, they'll have some shooting targets, and they'll have some other targets. And actually, I wonder, oh, I am still within range. I could do a psychic action for Warcraft there. I don't know if that's worth it, but I might. Uh, and then Crow is just going to come charging out of the building here and look at some Bullrins. So I gotta be a little bit worrisome about these guys, but otherwise, that is my movement phase. Nice, quick, and easy. So they are actually, as much as I want to smite those Bullgrins, these guys are going into my psychic phase. Uh, they're going to do a uh, Warcraft psychic action, need another five plus, which I got. So that is gonna be one point for me there at the end of this turn, in addition to uh, whatever other ones I get. So that's gonna bring me into the shooting phase. Scratch that shooting phase comment. I still got some psychic abilities to do with Crow over here. Crew is going to throw a Purifying Flame into these Ogrens here, looking for a Warp Charge of 5 for 3 Mortal Wounds. If I, ha yeah, if I happen to get uh, an 11 plus, it's going to be D3 plus 3 Mortal Wounds. Go, go. Hey. Yeah, so it's only going to be 3 Mortal Wounds, uh, but that is enough to take out one of your Ogrens there, uh, yep. which is good for me. This unit of Terminators going into the shooting phase, they're actually going to unload into the Command Squad right there. So it's going to be uh, 16 Storm Bolter shots. You gotta love Bolter Discipline for this one. And it is going to be uh, three Psy Cannon shots. So I'll have to uh, take a look at those ones in just a second. 16 shots hitting on threes. Okay, that is a very good roll for me. That was a miss there. Oh, That's no. a very good roll for me, actually, yeah. Oh, this is gonna hurt. And these are gonna be wounding on, uh, uh, I was gonna say twos. These are gonna be wounding on threes. Okay, so that, that's where it kind of balances out a little bit for us. So that is only gonna be, only six wounds. Uh, now what's your armor save on your guardsman? Uh, probably not that much, probably. Five plus. Ooh, yeah. So that, that is gonna hurt. Um, so now before we do that, I'm just gonna add the side cannon shots. And three shots from the side cannon. This is going to be hitting on fours because I moved. So only two hits on that one. Uh, and this is going to be wounding on twos. So that's going to be two wounds and that's going to be enough AP to eat through most of your save. So starting with the six five up saves. If you get enough of them, you'll just straight wipe them. And 
Oh my goodness. So four guys right off the bat are going down. So that's the whole command squad right there. That, that's the flamers. Oh, okay, that's right, because the company commander is not part of that squad, is nope, he? Nope, he is a separate man. He is all on his own now. So he is all on his own. Okay, that's right. They are no longer part of that same squad. So that is going to be one for me on that one. Um, and yeah, you know what? Uh, Crow is just going to take a couple pot shots into the company commander. And he's going to hit twice. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, he can. And he is going to wound twice. So you got a, uh, what's he got there for his uh, save? Has he got anything better than the four or five up? Uh, he does, he can. Oh, he has a five up save or a five up. So he's five, five up one way or the other. Five up or five up. It's either way, it's five yeah. up. Okay, so roll your two saves for him. And we got a uh, nope. two and a two. Oh, oh my. So he's gonna take two wounds, but I think he should at least have like four. Down five to two now, because that's four wounds for him. All right. He's so been hurt. Now he knows exactly who he wants to sword fight. Yep. There we go. It's gonna bring us into the uh, uh, com or the charge phase. So uh, Crow is actually gonna charge in to try and take care of these uh, ogrins right here, and uh, he's gonna roll a whopping nine inches. So he's actually just gonna kind of wrap around and take them on that way. Okay, activating Crow, he's gonna get six attacks on the charge. He's got his Warlord trait, which is gonna give him plus one to wounds. Uh, any rolls of six, uh, I can't remember if it's hits or the wounds, are, uh, are gonna become mortal wounds though, which uh, I don't kinda wanna, I kinda wanna see him stuck in combat there. So, and he's hitting on twos. Oh geez, that's scattered. Uh, no sixes, but all are going to hit. Now sadly, it's on the unmodified roll of six to wound that I'm doing the, uh, the mortal wounds, so I really don't want to kill these Bulgrins. Oh, oh no! <laughs> so it's going to be D3 mortal wounds, and I'm adding plus one to this, so... Oh, shite. <laughs> <laughs> so everything's going to wound. I think Crow's going to be stuck out in the open here. So let's find out how many mortal wounds are being done here. So that's going to be at least four mortal wounds being done. And then there's going to be six regular wounds at minus three damage two. So you're looking at five up saves. So the mortal wounds happen last. Angry. So you do the regular wounds first and then the mortal wounds are at the very end of it all. So you have a whole bunch of saves to make here. So six, five up saves. So six. Uh, uh, so one, two, two, three. three. Okay, so you're going to lose one and then, oh, okay. So that's going to leave Crow yeah. out in the open here. He did take out both Bulgrins. Bang! Bam. But uh, he is in a bad state. Yeah, he's in a bad state now because there's going to be a whole bunch of retribution coming his way at this point. So I might as well move a little bit close. Uh, no, oh geez. Oh, okay. So that is going to be the end of my turn. Uh, so basically, I'm going to get Warpcraft, and I think that's pretty much it because uh, I'm not doing engage on all fronts. I'm not in their back lines yet. Yeah, so that, that is pretty much my turn. So we're going to go on to turn two for the Astro Militarum. At the end of the Astro Militarum command phase, because they still have the old book, so they don't really have much of a command phase, they're going to get 10 points for this objective right here, uh, which also happens to have the raised banner. So that's going to be an additional point. So he's looking at 11 points total at the moment. Uh, but he's going to jump into the movement phase, and he's got some reserves coming in. And... Uh, yeah, we're going to see how they handle it. Um, I think Crow is going to be in rough short sorts in a little bit. Company commander leading from the front. He's going to go first. Uh, we are taking this into a sword-on-sword -sword fight. The Blade of the Blessed Blade of the Conqueror, Solar Macarius, versus the Cursed Blade of Castellan Crow. I, I don't quite think this might be an even matchup here, but we'll see what happens. Uh, and then we do have these two units over here, which we're going to figure out where they are going. Unless you already know. Uh, we'll figure it out. Okay. Alright, so we're gonna move the missile squad first. We're moving them six inches this way. Yeah. Still trying to keep them within that holding range for that one there. Yep, that makes sense. Gotta, gotta keep the objectives, right? Oh yeah, we gotta make sure, we wanna make sure that uh, we're getting those points. Yeah, and we worked it out that the squad's gonna be able to move and all but three guys are gonna be able to make it into rapid fire range uh, because one of your uh, one of your custom traits is uh, you've extended your rapid fire range. Getting that 18 inch rapid fire. Yeah, exactly. 
exactly. And what was what was the other trait you took? Uh, I was pyromaniacs, which means I get uh, re-roll wound rolls of one for all my flamers. Oh, okay, I don't think that's gonna come up anymore. At this well, point. it would it would have been useful at it, some point. It would have, yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, so yeah, he's gonna get them moved, and uh, right. then we're gonna move on to this one. This squad over here, uh, Ox is actually just gonna breach him through the walls and advance towards this objective. Let's have them make a run. Two witches, which I don't think is enough to get them in there. Do you have anything that allows you to re- Oh, there we go. Uh, and yeah, actually, let's do it. Let's let pull and play that. All right, command point re-roll. Three inches. Oh, so it's still you know only what? nine inches, which is not enough, unfortunately, to get within the three inches, because I think you need an 11, a 10 or 11. Um, but it's not quite enough. So I think he's probably just gonna maneuver to try and not be in line of sight, which I think you might wanna end up putting your guys somewhere over here then. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, yeah, just like right like that. Yeah, cause the tree is obscuring there. So he's gonna get uh, get it figured out and uh, we'll come back once it's all moved. This squad has just moved up and it's uh, trying to stay out of line of sight of that unit of Terminators as best as possible. Um, I think we've, we've already taken a look at it. I think there's a couple guys that are just gonna shift over a little bit. Um, but generally speaking, that tree is uh, blocking line of sight, uh, so he's pretty safe there. So that is going to bring us into the shooting phase, which means order. Oh wait, no, no, you have reinforcements first. So uh, yeah, so they can come down nine inches away from uh, from an enemy model. The Tempesta signs are going to be dropping in now. One thing we didn't catch at the very beginning, but we have discussed it because this is a little bit more of a you know fun narrative crusade type battle. Um, Technically, he was only supposed to have one detachment on this one, Oops. but uh, yeah, we're, we're having some fun on this one, so we're, we're going to just kind of let it slide a little bit. He's still paying the points for it all. Uh, I, I always like seeing a uh, little bit of the challenge. So these guys, the command squad is going to drop in. Um, so is the command, like, oh, both squads are dropping in. We're bringing everyone in in one. Oh, we're going to concentrate all that firepower on those Terminators and all right. yeah, see what happens. Because there's two Meltas, two Plasma Guns on a whole, bottle of, uh, whole lot of Hotshot and Hotshot Volley. So he's really going to take out these Terminators. So thankfully, um, well, hopefully their armor holds down for him. All right, so that's going to bring us to the end of the movement phase into the shooting phase. Yes, so, we're, so we're doing some orders out here. Yep. He is going to give them, bring it down. We're going to give a so plus one to the wounds. Uh, no, that's a reroll wounds of one, I believe. Yes, reroll yeah. wounds of one. So yep. just make sure because I got the plasma. Yeah, most of their stuff is going to be wounding on... The plasma, if you overcharge, it's all, everything's going to be wounding on twos, reroll ones. If you don't overcharge, the melta on twos, the plasma on, on uh, threes, but that's Actually, still really good. you know what? Because they got plasma, let's do take it down for both of them. Or, Can you issue the same order twice? Let's do take in. So take Orders may be issued. So uh, reroll uh, hits a one, okay. Uh, no, a unit may only be issued by one, affected by one yeah. order. Not that it is only one order. Yeah. So we are going to give it take aim for both of them then. So hopefully those plasma guys don't get burned out in their first shot. So you so you can't issue the same order twice? Yes. Okay. So, so take aim and take aim. Take aim and take aim. Beautiful. Okay. So we got to resolve these before anything else happens then. So uh, we'll get going. So the plasma and the melta going into the terminators. We got four plasma shots, two melta shots. So go ahead and start rolling, Alex. Let's see what happens. We're Let's doing the get those meltas out of the way first. Sounds like fun. So two meltas are gonna hit. Um, oh wait, no, one that, is gonna sorry, hit. Sorry, that two does not hit. Yeah, I'm thinking they're they're a lot better than they actually are. So now roll the plasmas. Uh, we gotta get all the shooting done. And that two more hits. And re-roll that one. Here's Cause, praying because you got that take aim. Well, okay. he didn't blow up. He didn't blow up, but it's okay. So we got two plasma and one melta coming in against my terminators here. And trying to do it so again. we're wounding on twos because everything is strength eight because you did opt to overcharge. Correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. So wounding on twos. Oh, three wounds. Okay, perfect. So uh, I got to roll these uh, one because uh, uh, there's some different AP here. So the melta. Uh, no. I think, I'm, I think I'm pretty much looking at invulnerable saves regardless. The one Melta is yeah. a minus four. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at uh, invulnerable saves one or the other, but right. you know, the, the Melta does a lot more damage than the Plasma. So let's oh, see yeah. if I save the Melta. I will save the oh. Melta, yes! Okay, Plasma Guns. I'll save one of the Plasmas as well. So one Plasma does go through, which is gonna be two damage. So we will just put it on uh, this dude right here who does not have the Psy Cannon. 
Okay, so we got the next shots coming in there, also taking aim, so re-rolling once, so they're gonna be hitting on threes, and uh, wounding, I think, uh, I think the hotshot volley guns are gonna be wounding on uh, fours, and the uh, the hotshot las guns on three, or sorry, on fives. So go ahead and uh, right. roll your shots, so you got... So um, first we got the two regular the, las guns. Two hotshot las guns coming in, hitting on threes. All right, re-roll that one, because you got take aim. There we go, there so that's two go. going in right there. And you got eight shots from the uh, Hot Shot Volley Guns. Four, five. Eight shots coming in. Uh, minus one's to hit on this one because they did move. So unfortunately, so that's a reroll. That's, that's a reroll. Re Those and are then, out. Yeah. So three hits right there. And uh, okay, nope. so just three more hits just from that one. Three. So um, two wounding on, uh, on a five plus and three wounding on a four plus. So this is the five plus. Quick note, we just forgot to mention it. Uh, he is using the gifts of the Mechanicus here. So those sixes that he rolled are gonna just cause some mortal wounds. Um, so we do gotta find out if the other stuff wounds first, cause that might eat through that Terminator uh, before anything else is done. So go ahead and roll the regular wounds here. Um, so not, not the mortals, just the regular wounds. Because uh, there was two more. Yes. Yep. Now these were both hotshot volley guns, correct? Yes. Okay, so wounding on uh, fours. So one more wound there, and I do have an armor save against this, which I will make. Um, wait, what's the AP on the thing? I might not make Minus it. Minus three. Minus three, okay, no, that does not make it then. So that is going to take out this Terminator right here, and it's gonna cause three more wounds. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna take out this guy right over here, I think. So that is enough to take out a couple Terminators, um, but that is pretty much the shooting from over here. Oh, you had a pistol you still have to shoot as well. Oh, yes, Mr. Yeah, pistol. Quickly shoot your pistol. You got one shot with him. Just grab a D6 and fire it off. No. Nope. So that's going to be a two. two. Yeah, that's not. So that is the end of it. And I believe he gave up his weapon to get the Rod of Command. Yes. Okay, so that is their shooting done. Next up, this squad is going to launch into Castellan Crow over there. He's got six guys in sight, unfortunately, one Let's of which is a pistol. Double check. Oh. You are within rapid fire for everything but the, oh, does the, your, your trait, does that uh, make the plasma gun? Yes, everything that has rapid fire. Oh boy, howdy. Okay, so that's going to basically be two shots there and then two, four, six, eight las gun shots. So that is going to be some hefty firepower coming in at Crow. Las guns coming up first, going to be hitting on four plus, I believe, because these are yep. guardsmen. So just regular peoples. Yeah, just regular duders. And only two hits. Oh. That seems about average for me. <laughs> okay, but we do have some plasma coming in, so roll your two plasma. Uh, yeah, your two shots for plasma. Overcharged. Both are going Both to hit. Beautiful. Hit. Okay, that is great. Plasma guns wounding on a five. That's going to be one wound from that. Uh, and then your plasma gun. These are going to be overcharged, so wounding on twos. Oh. Uh, oh! Um, yep, so there's going to be two wounds coming through from the plasma. Thankfully, I do have an invul save. Two up save on the las gun. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. And uh, the overcharged plasma, that's what, D, uh, minus three, I believe? Yes. Yeah, minus three. So uh, I'm looking at, uh, I'm using my invul save for this one. So four up invul saves against this. I'm going to command point reroll that. Go right ahead. Nope. Hey! Okay, so I'm going to be taking two damage on Crow. Pow. This squad up next is going to be lending their firepower. Now, unfortunately, the missile launcher doesn't have line of sight because of the way the angles work, but these guys all do. And with the 18-inch rapid fire, uh, we worked out that at least these uh, these four guys up front are within the 18 inches. So it's going to be uh, two, four, six, and then seven, eight, nine las gun shots coming in at Crow. Nine shots coming in, hitting on fours. Oh my, oh my. So only three are hitting there. Uh, but you know what? You can nickel and dime crow easily enough. So go ahead and roll the wound on this, needing a five plus. Oh, one, one wound. Okay, so I do got my two up armor save against this, which I will make happily. <laughs> which brings us down just to the company commander. He probably just has a pistol of some sort. Just a simple uh, uh, bolt gun, 24, rapid it's two. It's a bolt gun, eh? Okay, so he's rolling two shots, hidden on, I'm assuming, fours or threes? Four. Uh, fours? You know, let's quickly look that up. Two shots, hitting on threes. There we go. Not and both wounding, of them. And going to be wounding on fours. And that's oh. going to be two wounds. 
Oh, oh no. Okay. So, oh wait, no, I got a two up save. What am I worried about? <laughs> so I will save both of those. Uh, and that is going to bring us to the end of the shooting phase. Company commander is feeling ballsy today and he's going to charge into Castellan Crow. So go ahead and roll your dice. Get your five inch charge. Praying okay. for the blessing of Lord Solar Macarius. Yeah, that, that's enough. That'll so, make it. So he gets in. Oh right. yeah. The guard have not always been known for their smarts, but darn are they brave. And Alex is opting to just kind of hang back over here, basically, and I force my Terminators to make a decision on where they're going here. So we only have the one combat going on, so we're going to get right to it. So with the Blade of Conquest, he's got three attacks at strength five, so hitting on threes. Oh, two we're are going to hit. You know what? We're going to see Peter reroll it. All right. Fire off. There hey! We go. So three are going to hit. These are going to be wounding on threes because it is going to be strength five. So what are we seeing? Oh no, you won. won. And you've already used your reroll. So one wound coming through, and this is AP minus four, so I'm using my four invul save here. No, so no. it's gonna be D3 damage yes. coming in on this one. So how much damage am I taking? Two. Gonna be taking two damage, so Crow is starting to hurt a little bit, but he's still in the fight. In response, Castell and Crow is just gonna come back and just gonna murder this guy, so hitting on twos. I don't like that one, but it does not matter. And uh, he does, oh, I gotta check on his Warlord traits because it's, because um, he was charged. Oh, it's plus one to wound, that's right. And he is gonna be wounding on uh, on twos. And yeah, that that's just gonna, that's just gonna kill your commander right there. Oh. That's that's gonna be like a total of 12 wounds right there. Um, you do uh, you do have some uh, invul saves that you can make on this one. Yep. So roll four invul saves. What's his invul? Five plus. Okay. And the company commander is it just gonna bite. Bites it. it. Yeah, it but screams as a soul pulled away. He's brave though. And Crow is just gonna consolidate three inches towards one of the guard squads that uh, that injured him. Hopefully, getting in and causing some more damage before his last wound is taken away. But it's going to bring us to the end of the Astro Militarum turn two. So they uh, they've raised a banner, so they got one point for that. They are getting engaged. No, they're not no. getting engaged on all fronts at this point. Okay, so they they're not getting a lot of points this this turn. Um, but they have put some hurt on the Grey Knights. I've lost a couple Terminators and I've lost quite a few wounds on Crow. So let's jump into Grey Knights turn two. The Grey Knights need to respond, so Crow is going to move up six inches to get a little bit closer to this unit of Guardsmen right over here. And the Terminators over here are going to move five inches, get back on this side of the wall, and uh, basically just try to, to cause, some, uh, cause some damage to these uh, Tempestus Scions over here. But I do also have my purifiers coming on the board, which is very Boo. important. And <laughs> Boo! I get five more guys. What's this? This is not a fair fight. Uh, so they are going to come on as well, so i got to figure out where they're going. Purifiers are dropping in, and they're just going to drop in on this side of the uh, the wall here, nine inches away from uh, from that squad. Uh, and they're going to just stick behind cover as well. That means if you know they happen to fail their charge, they're not going to get stuck out in the open there. Uh, but that is going to bring me to the end of my movement phase, which is going to bring us into the funneled psyker phase. So sadly, uh, I have to be more than nine inches away. So purifying flame is not going to be going off on these uh, uh, purifiers. So instead, we're just going to try and smite. So we're looking for a five plus. That is going to be a five plus. So it's going to be D3 mortal wounds against this squad of guardsmen here. So that is going to be three mortal wounds on this guard squad here. So three guys are going to just drop. Who would you like to take out? We'll start from the back then. Sure. One, two. Three. Beautiful. Okay. Crow, however, is six inches away, so he's going to do a purifying uh, flame against this unit of guardsmen. Looking for a five plus. Yes, a five plus. So in this case, just three mortal wounds against that squad right there. So just a couple guys are going to are going to bite it. One, two, and three. Beautiful. Okay. And that's going to bring us over here. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to see one more. Yeah, I think we're going to see one more, uh, ooh, you know what, um, no, you know what, I'm going to actually use, uh, Symphonic Strike. Yeah, I'm going to use Symphonic Strike, actually, uh, for these guys, so it's a, uh, value of six, uh, but they're going to add plus one to their, um, to their attacks. 
So that is going to go off. I did roll an eight there, but yeah. So that is going to go off. So those terminators are going to be having four attacks a piece, basically, as they charge in. Pure Fire Squad going to rapid fire their bolters into this unit of guard. So it's going to be 20 shots hitting on threes. That's a pretty good roll, actually. My, my dice have kind of been on fire for my hits this game. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, which is, it's a big cry from the last game I played. The last game I played, my dice were just terrible. Uh, and these are going to be wounded on threes. Oh my goodness. Well, we know who uh, oh, the Emperor boy. protects in this game. Apparently. So that is going to be 10 wounds. Now you do have some cover there. So you get, you're getting your four up saves against this. So 10 four up saves against these storm bolters. So go ahead and <coughs> see who lives and who dies. All right. All right, so I see four are gonna make it. So six are gonna go down and you have two, four, six, seven. So one guy is remaining. Who is the lucky soul? We are gonna go with Mr. Grenade Launcher. He's okay. gonna stick around. All right, and that puts him firmly out of charge range as well. So that's probably not a bad choice. Uh, okay, so next up we got four Storm Bolter shots coming into this squad right here from Crow, hitting on twos. That one goes away. And wounding on threes, so that's going to be two wounds. You do have cover for the unit because you're uh, hugging that wall right there. So once again, you're looking at a four up save. So just two here. And one makes it, one goes down. So who is the unlucky soul here? Uh, we'll start with him. Okay. And, uh, and you know, before I quickly forget, I did have to roll a morale save over here Fair at the enough. end of the last one. Uh, I completely forgot it. Oh, wait, I only lost two guys. Yep. They have a leadership debate. Okay, never mind. They can't, they can't fail it. Uh, and then over here, we're going to start with the, the side cannon. We're going to target We're gonna target the squad with the, uh, the hot shot All guns. Right. So this is going to be hitting on fours. So two hits, and it's going to be wounding on twos. Two wounds, uh, and the AP is going to eat through your cover save, I believe. I'm going to add eight storm bolter shots to this for not that. Oh, okay, no, that, that's a lie. That's okay, that's five. And wounding on threes. Oh, they're all going to wound there, but he does have cover. So you're going to have a four up save against the storm bolters, and you're going to have a five up against the one side cannon shot. So six total in this case. Let's do this. Side cannon up first. No. Nope. Oh, one guy is going to go down from the side cannon. Dealer's choice. Start here. Bam. And you got five from the Two, storm bolters. Three, four, five. And the storm bolters took down three more guys. So there's only one scion left in that squad as we move into the charge phase here. Now with the tide of celerity, I'm pretty much guaranteed some charges. He has no command points in order to uh, in order to counter this. I could be gutsy and try to do a multi-charge here, but uh, I think I want to just kind of guarantee that I get in. So I'm just going to declare that uh, Terminators are charge against these squ the squad here. 10 inches, which definitely gets them in. Like yeah, so. squad, gonna fight. Yeah. And then over here, Crow is going to charge in. And 9 inches, so he's definitely in as well. So I think this might be the turn that determines the, uh, the game here uh, as we get into the combat phase. Crew is going to attempt to just cut down these guardsmen, hitting on twos. All of them are going to hit, and these are all going to be wounding on uh, threes because of strength five. And yeah, I think morale will probably take care of it. So that's going to be uh, four wounds with the AP. That's enough to just kind of kill four guys. So, that's fair enough. Yeah. We will start plucking and plucking. Ooh, sergeant's going too. Uh, I, I don't know what your leaderships are looking like, so I don't know if your sergeant wants to stay or not, but we'll get it figured out. So basically the plasma and the sergeant is going to stick around uh, and try to bravely hold off Crow, but I, you know, you know what, he only has one room remaining, so one lucky hit. That, uh, that sergeant could take down Crow. Who knows? Uh, but next up, we're going to come over here, and I do have the symphonic strike going on this one. So uh, yeah, that one uh, could cause some pain. So with the Symphonic Strike, this is actually going to be a total of uh, 13 attacks coming in, hitting on threes. And yeah, I, I, think, I think we're looking at a dead guard squad here. Uh, these are all halberds, so they're all going to be wounding on uh, th uh, twos as well because it's strength six. And yeah, yeah, with their... 
Yeah. So with their uh, with their uh, damage and everything like that, squad of four is just toasty. All right. So, so they One, they are toasty. Two. And at the end of, uh, we're almost to the end of combat. Uh, I'm just gonna get these guys consolidating right now. They're just gonna consolidate in here, which is gonna give this guy a chance to fight back. Uh, and then over here, your two little guardsmen are just gonna pile in. Oh, and yes. maybe see if we can get a lucky hit off. Four decks coming back from the guard squad here, hitting on fours, three hits. You're looking for a five to wound. And oh. one, one lucky wound is all you're looking for here. There we go. Oh. oh, one wound. Okay, I got a two up save against this. Oh, oh okay. Oh, so close. That almost took Crow out. That was a close one. Uh, but Crow is going to be victorious. Uh, we do have a couple quick morale sa Oh, and uh, this guy. Yeah, this guy can actually attack back. How many attacks does the, uh, the Scion got? One attack coming in, hitting on fours. Uh, no. No, Natch. So swing and a swish. That is going to be a swing and a swish. So we do have some morale to do. So these guys did lose four duders this turn. So you're rolling a d6 plus the uh, plus four. And uh, depending on what you roll. So we got a roll of two. So a total of six. So they're okay. Mm. Uh, but over here, though, these, these guys lost eight. The... Yeah, so you're rolling a d6 plus eight. So you're looking for a one pretty much. Uh, no. no. So it's going to be a total of... Uh, Total of 11, so that is going to take out the last two guys there. All right. So they are, oh wait, hold on, sorry. No, you roll one. Oh. So one guy goes. Yep. I'm thinking of the old edition. Now you roll a d6 for every remaining guy to see uh, how uh, what sort of attrition it is. And you minus, or you add one to this. I can't remember if you if he runs or not. Got to check that out. So because uh, I was thinking of the old rules, the, the new attrition rules for 9th edition, as most people should know, uh, basically instead of like losing the difference that you failed the morale test on, it basically causes another d6 roll. On a roll of a 1, more guys run away. He was, even with the minus, was only rolling a 3, so he's fine. The sergeant is stuck in combat, but we do have one last one over here, which is going to be 9 plus a d6. I, I think he's running. He's he gone. Run. It yeah. doesn't matter. He's gone. If, if you rolled a 1, he would have stuck around, but that is him out. Ah! So that does leave you with three guys on the table. Uh, Alex, I don't know if you want to continue on with this or if you just want to call it or I, bravely fight on. I think that I think the uh, Grey Knights have sufficiently purged this Astro Militarum uh, unit here. Okay, so let, let's let's get into the, the de debrief and uh, just have a quick chat about the game. All right, so Alex, we're, we're at the end of the game here. Um, I mean, I, 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 think, I think this game really showcased two things. Uh, one of them, I think it really showcased the power difference between 8th edition codex and 9th edition codex. Uh, but I think it also really illustrated the, the power swing at lower levels. Uh, I think some armies kind of scale a little bit better. And I, mm -hmm. think, I think in this particular case, I came out, I came out ahead uh, on it because I only lost a couple Terminators. Um, but I do have some thoughts. I think there is some stuff that uh, maybe with the list building that could have come out a little bit different because I know we talked a little bit about it before. So yeah. I'm going to give my suggestion. I, I want to get your thoughts on it. Um, I think you probably could have benefited from having a tank. Yes. I, I think if you had been able to find points for a Lehman Russ, how many points are they anyway? About well, 130, okay, so 120? I have him set up as a commander. Okay. So on a commander, he'd be 220. 220, okay. Uh, for points. And they... Uh, now, is that with the, the sponsons and everything? Uh, yes. Okay. So, yeah, like if, if you... Between would, 220 and 240. Yeah, so if, if you had brought in, like, even if you didn't bring in the Lehman Russ Commander, I think mm. that's a very beefy strength 8 battle cannon that would have done a lot of damage to me. It eats yeah. through a lot of my armor save. The plasma eats through a lot. Um, I think the fact that you, you were very infantry heavy kind of played into the Grey Knight's strengths a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah I can see that. Yeah, because Grey Knights can really mow through infantry. They, they're yeah. Stormbolter shots, they're mortal wounds. Uh, for instance, with that tank, that, that tank there, honestly, my only real answer to it would have been mortal wounds and side cannons. So I would have had to get within smite range of it. That's right? fair enough, that um, would have been fun. And because a lot of my psychic powers only target the closest, uh, you could have screened it a little bit, yeah. and the tank would have had a couple turns where it could really hammer in. Yeah. So I, I, I think that's the big thing, and that, that comes down to a list building, uh, list building mechanic. Um, otherwise, I do, I do like the list. I think it was very thematic. I, I really enjoy. I always enjoy seeing a very infantry heavy list, uh, just, just in general. Uh, now, do, do you have any thoughts? Like, is there, is there anything that you did that you would have liked to have done differently, or? 
Uh, for me, I had a lot of fun. Uh, I honestly, this game went very well. Uh, the Bulgren, I kind of wish I'd moved the whole unit up instead of just the Bulgren. I might have had a better chance of flaming Castell and Crow instead of just getting those flamers wiped out. But that's something for another day. So I, I think, personally, I think with the Bulgrins, uh, you might have actually been better off keeping them back. Because okay. that, that would have put me into a little bit of a dicier charge, right? Because I was able to get out, I pretty much, like, I didn't really have much of a charge to make yeah. it all there. Whereas if you had kept them back here, I would have been looking at maybe like a seven or eight inch charge. Okay. It would have been a little bit longer. If Crow had failed it, it would have left him in a bad position to be countercharged. Yeah. Because um, basically, I was able to do a number on the Bulgrin. So I, I think you were, you were very aggressive with them, um, but you weren't able to capitalize that on, I think. Yeah, no, that's, that's speed is definitely one thing the guard is not well known for. Now, one other thing that I, I think might have been, might have put things a little bit more in your favor, is you did kind of spread out a little bit. I thought that was kind of interesting. I'm very used to guard castling up. Mm, uh, but yeah. in this case, like you had two squads over here, which were, like they couldn't benefit from any of your your orders or anything like that, so I, I think it was an interesting choice having your command squad and Bulgrins over here. Whereas what you could have done is you could have like castled up a little bit and just kind of like advanced outwards. Uh, I've seen that strategy before, and I wanted to try something different. Honestly, that was the That's, uh, in and out of it. I wanted to see if I could make something else work. I see the castle strategy, and I've used it before. I've seen it before. It's not bad, but. You know, why not? Why use guard? You got a whole bunch of variety of options, right? You got all sorts of different enemies you can take on and all sorts of different weapons you can take. So why not play with the options a bit? Fair enough. And I mean, in the end, it's, as long as you're happy with the decisions you've made and how you built your army, that, that is the most important thing. So yeah, like I, I think that, that's really the analysis I'm coming up with, I think. It's, I think uh, I think your tank really could have benefited, or even a chimera. Like that's, that's what I've been thinking, or because I find my first strike is actually the biggest, with the infantry, first strike is actually the biggest issue. Most people I've talked to would say take a chimera. The other choice, which I have recently bought, we're gonna be putting a sentinel in this crew. I, I'm always for a sentinel, I, I love them. One of my first armies was actually a, um, a 2000 point Katachin army that relied very heavily on Sentinels. Oh yes, them. that's, I uh, could get some Sentinels in, get some first strike, and I think that'll really, cause that'll draw more attention away from my infantry, and I think that'll help them survive. It protects them a bit, yeah. And then that's the thing, like I was able to just, uh, my, my initial volley taking out your command squad with the Storm Bolters was a little devastating. Yeah. Um, so I think that's where it really comes down. Oh, anyway, uh, Alex, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no, like you're, you're, you're definitely a stand-up guy. I, I, I look forward to seeing how your army grows, and and how your experience as a player grows and everything like that, and hopefully we'll have you on again. Uh, hope and to play you again. Beautiful, yeah, well, I'm, I'm here all the time. And to everyone watching, thank you so much for watching. Remember to leave your comments below. Uh, yes, there is some stuff that is clearly not to the book on, on this one. Uh, we are aware of it, but uh, again, this was more of a crusade narrative style mission. So we, we gave a little bit of leeway in that one uh, in regards to the detachments, but I already know uh, I already know a couple of you are probably already hammering away at your keyboard. But either way, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for commenting. Please hit that like and subscribe button, and we will see you next time. And I would like to say, oh. I would like to say thank you for Leland. This is one of my first games played, and uh, I really appreciate him taking the time to uh, teach me how to play, and hopefully we'll see more. I, get out more. I, I am always up for, for teaching people how to get into this hobby. I, I love it immensely. Um, I, I love watching that progression of, of seeing somebody who's kind of getting the ropes, kind of get those aha moments and figure things out and everything. It's always fantastic. So anyway, thank you all for watching and we will see you next time and happy wargaming.